Hi, in this video I'm going to work through the solution to an engineering mechanics rigid body equilibrium problem. Okay, so let's start by uh, reading through the question. So we have a part of a mechanism uh, that's shown at the left here. Okay, so we've got this diagram here to represent some sort of a mechanism and we're told in um, the information and in the diagram so our the component that we're considering is A, B, C, D and we have a 500 newton meter moment applied so just here and we have a 600 newton force applied at C and we have information over here about um, how the mechanism is connected to other parts of the mechanism that are not shown. So we have um, told we have a pin joint at A. Okay, so if we look over here, here's our pin connection for point A. And we have a roller support at D. Okay, so down here. So that will give us information about the forces, the reaction forces at those supports or constraints uh, for when we draw our free body diagram. Okay, so if we look at the question, uh, we see that we're asked to determine the magnitude. Okay, so we need the magnitude of the reaction forces uh, on the component at the supports. So in our solution to our rigid body equilibrium problem, uh, the first thing we do is to draw the free body diagram. Okay, so that's just simply uh, a representation of the external boundaries of the component that we're analysing. So in this case, the component A, B, C, D. So that's our uh, drawing to represent that body. And then once we have that, we can start to add in um, some uh, dimensions on our drawing just for reference. And we should also add in uh, the labels for the points that we're referencing in our solution. And then we can start adding in the forces. So start with the ones that, uh, that we know, so the applied load. So we have the 600 Newton force at 30 degrees to the vertical um, axis shown on our diagram. And we can also put in our couple moment of 500 Newton meters that's applied at um, point B. Okay, so now we need to start to consider the uh, forces at the reactions. So let's first consider um, the support D here. So uh, from the diagram, we can see that it's a roller, and we're also told um, from the information in the question that it's a roller support. So this is free to move in a horizontal direction. Uh, so there's going to be no force component in the horizontal direction, but it's constrained from moving in the vertical direction so we need a force there um, to represent that connection between the component A, B, C, D and the ground. Okay, so next consider um, the connection at point A. So we have a pin connection here. This um, support prevents the component A, B, C, D from moving horizontally and vertically, but it can still rotate because it's a pin, uh, so the constraint here will be um, two forces. Okay, so a force vertically um, to represent the constraint in the vertical direction and a force uh, to prevent translation in the horizontal direction. And of course we need to label our unknown forces. Okay, so um, here we are at point A, so I've called it RA or R subscript A subscript Y to indicate the Y direction and RA subscript X and also note that I've labelled the force over here RD. Okay, so now having uh, used components X and Y I should really uh, define what they are. So just somewhere on my diagram I've uh, put that here. So X direction to the positive to the right, Y positive upwards and for moments anti-clockwise positive. 
Okay, so now that we have our free body diagram, we can go and apply the equations of equilibrium. And uh, I've just started a new page, but you on your sheet of paper will just be able to continue below your free body diagram. So we can start by writing the equations of equilibrium. So usually we'll start with a moment equation because that will generally enable us to find uh, one equation with only one unknown in it, or at the most, usually only two. So in this case, we can find, uh, if we take moments about point A here, the moment effect of RA, X will be zero because it passes through point A. The moment effect of RAY will be zero because it also passes through point A. So the only unknown will be RAD, uh, sorry, RD. Note that when we write our moment equation, that it's very important that you have um, the point that you're taking moments about indicated in the, uh, the moment equation that you've written here. Okay, so we have sum of the moments about point A, and we're taking anti-clockwise positive, and that's all equal to zero. All right, so let's start um, looking at the, the forces and moments that are on our free body diagram and start to write our um, equation. So let's start with our applied load here. So we've got a 500 Newton meter um, couple anti-clockwise. So we can write that in. So, sorry, that's clockwise that moment, not anti-clockwise. Uh, so that's a, a negative moment because we've taken anti-clockwise as positive. The next thing uh, we'll look at is um, the force here, and that will have a vertical component, 600 cos 30, and a horizontal component, 600 sine 30. Now the horizontal component will be um, acting along this direction here, so that will pass through point A, so we will have a zero moment effect. So let's write that in. So we've got our 600 Newton um, force component vertical is 600 cos 30 and its perpendicular distance from point A is 300 plus 500 and we convert that from millimetres into metres so we have consistent units in our equation uh, so that's 0.8 uh, and then next we have um, the force RD down here. Okay, so that's rotating anti-clockwise about point A. Uh, so that will be a positive moment, RD times uh, 0.8 again. And just going back to this one, um, the moment from the 600 Newton force is negative. Because if we look up here, that component will be acting downwards. So that will cause a rotation of clockwise about point A. And all of that is equal to zero. Okay, so if we now um, do the algebra and solve for our unknown force RD, we get uh, 1144.6 newtons. Okay, so now we can uh, look at using the other two equations of equilibrium. Uh, so first of all, we'll use some of the forces in the horizontal direction or the x direction equal to zero and look at our free body diagram and we can see we've got RAX and we'll have the horizontal component of the 600 Newton force applied at 30 degrees. So they're the only two forces in the horizontal or x direction so we can just write that as RAX equals 600 sine 30 and do the algebra and we get RAX is 300 Newtons. Okay, so now let's do some of the forces in the vertical direction equals zero. So we'll have um, RAY and then we'll have the vertical component of uh, the 600 Newton force. So <clears throat> that's acting in the negative direction. So 600 cos 30 and we've got RD acting down here in the positive direction which we worked out before so we can just put that in do our algebra again um, and solve for our unknown RAY equals minus 625 newtons 
and the negative uh, sign that we get from the algebra just indicates that the force um, sense that we've shown up here on our diagram uh, is was incorrect so the force is actually acting in the negative y direction so acting downwards um, but we can just leave our diagram and we should leave our free body diagram uh, as it is don't go back and change it uh, because then all of the other um, work that you've done up here uh, will be wrong okay so um, you can just leave that um, negative sign there to indicate that that force up here is actually acting downwards. Okay, now the question asks for the magnitude of the forces at the support. So uh, at the moment we've got RAX and RAY, so we need to combine those um, using Pythagoras theorem. So just the square root of the sum of the squares. Um, and we can put those values for RAX and RAY into this equation and we get 693.3 newtons. Okay, so finally we should um, summarize our answers and round to the appropriate number of significant figures. So we have RA, the magnitude of the reaction force at the pin at A on the component ABCD is 693 newtons and the force on the component at support D is 1.44 kilonewtons. Okay, and that's it.